Go ahead and scroll. Go ahead and scroll. Be an old troll if you want to. I'm all about freedom. You're free to scroll to the next video. To look at the next animal video, baby video, laughing video, trending video, viral video, anime video, lip syncing video, dancing video. You're free. I'm not making you watch or follow Evangelist Mike Dial. You're free to do whatever you want to do. I'm not making you watch this. I'm not forcing you. I preach faith, not force. God is a gentleman. He won't make you believe. He'll let you go to hell if you want to. He'll let you refuse and rebel. Be in cults and the occult if you want to. He'll let you die in your sins if you want to. But if you want to know the truth of God and the truth of the gospel, then stay tuned and follow evangelist Mike Dial. So I thought, I thought that uh, I would introduce a new look, a new fad, a new style, a new fashion. People said, you need to be more relevant. You need to be more practical. You need to be more contemporary. You need to connect. You need to relate. Wear the shades. Nah, I'm not going to wear the shades. So I thought I'd debut my new holy jeans. You like them? I thought I'd come out with holes in my jeans. What, how do you think? How do you think that look would go? How, how do you think that look would go on me? Pretty stupid, huh? Pretty stupid, huh? We need to throw these things away. You need to throw these things away in the garbage, in the trash, where they belong. And you need to learn the real Jesus, not the Jesus that Stephen Furtick and Craig Groeschel and Rich Wilkerson Jr. and Rick Warren and Joel Osteen and all the mega church pastors are teaching you. That's a fake Jesus. I said it's a fake Jesus. It's a fraud. It's a foolish Jesus. It's a flaky Jesus. The real Jesus of the Bible took the chairs. He took the furniture of the money changers that were getting rich in the name of God, like the televangelists today who are only telling lies. And he took up their furniture and he got in their face and he said, this should be a house of prayer for all the nations. But you, 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 you have made it a den of thieves. And he took the tables of the money changers. You can say the chairs. The Bible says the tables. He took the furniture in his carpenter's hands and he threw it. He threw it. He threw it. He threw it. He was angry. He was mad. He was jealous. You see, the real Jesus of the Bible, the real Jesus that you read about in the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, is not the fake, fantasy, fairy tale, fictitious, fiction, Jesus that is coming from and emanating from the modern megachurch and media church pulpits. It is the Jesus myth. It is a Jesus mythology. It is the Jesus legend. It is the Jesus conspiracy. It is the God con. So what I want to do is take you to the real Jesus. Where do we find the biblical Jesus? Where do we find the historical Jesus? Where do we find the Jesus of history? Where do we find the Jesus of the cross? Well, we find it in his holy, inspired, infallible, and inerrant word. And we study to show ourselves approved of the God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word. Why? Because doctrines of demons and doctrines of devils from teachers trying to get rich and tickle your ears and tickle your ears and tickle your ears is all you hear today. God, deliver us from a purpose-driven life and bring us back to a purchase-led life. The purchase of Jesus on the cross. God, deliver us from books, from books that lie. 
from books that deceive, from books that are false doctrines, from books that are of the devil. God, deliver us. We are not called to have a purpose-driven church or a purpose-purchase-driven life. We are called to the purchase that Jesus made on the cross. And it's time to draw a line in the sand. It's time to take a stand. It's either the Bible and the purchase of Christ. Or it's the purpose-driven church and the purpose-driven life of Rick Warren. You need to take this thing and just about every book that's been written in the name of Christ in the last two or three decades and throw it in the trash in the name of Jesus. Throw it away. Throw it away with that PC. Throw it away with that laptop. Throw it away. Somebody said, what do you think about this startup and that startup and all these startups and all these tech companies and all these tech giants that began in a garage? Apple, Microsoft, college dropouts began in a garage. It began in a garage. IT, a startup, and now they're worth billions and billions and billions of dollars. I'll tell you what I think about every company that began in a garage. It should stay in the garage with the rest of the garbage and you should do as I did with the chair and I I did with a book and throw it away. In the monkey, in the bakunta of Asunto, for God says, I am arising with power. I am arising with power in my wings, and I will show forth my strength to the earth. And who shall be able to stand in the day of my rising, says God. Are you still with me? Let's get real. The real Jesus. Matthew's Gospel chapter 12 and we could pick any chapter but I have a reason for this chapter and we're going to get to it but Matthew chapter 12 and beginning in verse 30 the words of Jesus they're written in the red I said they're written in red I said they're written in red you need to get away from your red wine get away from your red wine and your red roses and your red politics and get back to the words written in red get back to the blood get back to the Bible get back to the broken body of the Lord Jesus Christ I don't want to hear messages about Jesus I want to hear Jesus I don't want to hear messages about God. I want to hear from God. Listen to me. If you've ever listened to a preacher before, we don't need any more motivational speakers. We need preachers. I said, we don't need any more motivational speakers. We don't need the Zig Ziglers of the world in the pulpit. We don't need, we don't need motivational speakers. We need God called, God anointed, God equipped preachers, 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 preachers. We don't need Don LaPreeze. We don't need Tony Robbins is in the pulpit. We got a lot of Tony Robbins is in the pulpit. They say, I heard it said, imitation is the highest form of flattery. Well, I guess Stephen Furtick is the most flattered man in the world. I thought about growing out my beard and looking like Steve Furtick, but I said, no, I'm not going to do that. I thought about getting a cap. And putting a cap on, putting a cap on backwards. And coming out here trying to look really cool. But the Bible said, if you read Paul real closely, the man that covers his head is a disgrace and a shame. Don't shout me down now because I'm preaching real good. We're not going to do that. I, 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 I'm not going to come out here with my cowboy hat. No, I'm not doing that. We have had too many gimmicks for too long. We have had too many games for too long.
No, I'm going to do like George Strait does at the end of his show. How many of y'all ever seen George Strait? And by the way, he ain't King George. There's one king. Elvis is not the king. Michael Jackson's not the king. There is one king, and his name is Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But I'm going to do like, like George Strait does at the end of his show with his cowboy boots and his hat, and he sings, This is where the cowboy rides away. <laughs> My heart is sinking like the setting sun. Setting all the things that I have done. Da 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 this cowboy has ridden away from religion. This cowboy has left the range of religion. I've left my pea patch for the last time. I've left my pea patch for the last time. I have left your councils and your committees and your conventions and your conferences and your camp meetings and your dead and cold churches for the last time. This cowboy has rode away. This train don't stop there anymore. The real Jesus. He wasn't trying to look cool or act cool. He wasn't wearing holy jeans. The only thing holy about the modern gospel of the preachers preaching in holy jeans is their jeans. Their, their gospel has holes in it. They don't preach the full gospel. They don't preach the message of the cross. They don't preach against sin. They don't look in the camera and call America to repentance and back to the cross. There's holes in their gospel. <laughs> Pardon me. I'm preaching so hard I sneezed. The real Jesus. Matthew 12 and verse 30. He that's not with me is against me. Are you with Jesus? I mean the real Jesus. I don't mean the fake Jesus. I don't mean the TBN Jesus, the Daystar Jesus, the 700 Club Jesus, the CBN News Jesus. I don't mean the Saddleback Jesus, the Lakewood Jesus, the Hillsong Jesus, the Elevation Jesus, the Willow Creek Jesus, the Family Worship Center Jesus. I mean the real Jesus. I mean the real Jesus. The one who said, and you won't hear this from Joel Osteen, because Joel Osteen doesn't preach and doesn't believe the book of Joel. You won't hear this from Joseph Prince, because he follows the prince of the power of the air instead of the prince of peace. You won't hear this from Joyce Meyer, because she doesn't know the joy of the Lord, and she's headed to eternal fire. You won't hear this from Paula White, because she doesn't follow the apostle Paul. But you'll hear it from me. The real Jesus said, Wherefore I say to you, this is Matthew 12, 31, All manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven men. And whosoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven. But whosoever speaks against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him in this world, in the world to come. People tell me all the time, Brother Mike, you're possessed. You have a demon because you speak in tongues. You lay hands on the sick. You lay hands on the sick and they recover. You cast out demons. You believe in signs and wonders and miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit. But all that passed away when the last apostle died, Brother Mike. You're demonic. You have a devil. You're casting out devils. By the devil, that's what they said about Jesus. They said Jesus is beside himself. Jesus has a devil. Jesus is crazy. And the multitudes and the masses and the numbers forsook him. The ones who were crying, Hosanna, blessed be the rock. One moment, then we're saying, crucify him and crucify him. And that's what social media does. One minute, you're a star. You're a celebrity. You're famous. And the next minute, cancel culture cancels Christ. And that's what the cross was. And that's what they're trying to do to evangelist Mike Dahl right now. 
Somebody says, why are your numbers down, Brother Mike? You preaching the same way you've always preached? You used to have videos that had 281,000 views on TikTok. You used to have videos that had 120,000 views on TikTok. Why are your numbers down? Yeah, you have the occasional 4,000. You have the occasional 5,000. But in general, your numbers are why? Because they hate me and they hate what I preach and they ghost me and they, and they block me and they roast me. And they defellowship me and they defrock me and they blackball me and they blacklist me. And America's biggest pastors will not invite evangelist Mike Dial to speak at their church. Why? Because they hate me the same way they hated Jesus Christ. They didn't like it when Jesus threw the chairs. They didn't like it in John 8, 44, when he got in their face and he said, You are of your father, the devil. You're a liar and the father of lies. They didn't like it when he got in their face in Matthew 15, verse 7, and said, You are the blind, leading the blind, and all of you are going to fall. You're going to fall into a ditch. And that's the church today. I've fallen and I can't get up. I've fallen and I can't get up. It's the apostasy. It's the great departure from the church. When I listen to these yahoos, these young, wet behind the ear, whippersnapper, mega church pastors who are novices, when I listen to them and I listen to the, the frivolity and the fiction and the fantasy and the foolishness and the fables and the fairy tales they are preaching, I'm like the old woman in the Wendy's commercial. I say, where's the beef? Where's the beef? Where's the beef, Joel? Where's the beef, Stephen Furtick? Where's the beef, Joseph Prince? Where's the beef, Craig Groeschel? Where's the beef, Joyce Meyer? Where's the beef, TBN? No. Those people in the Southern Baptist Convention, Jackie and Graham, O.S. Hawkins, Charles Stanley, the late Jerry Falwell, he's not doing very well today. And he said, oh, all that passed away. They blaspheme the Holy Ghost because they call that which is of the Holy Spirit of the devil. That's the unpardonable spirit. That's the unpardonable sin. That, there is no such thing as the unconditional eternal security of the believer. Southern Baptist Convention. You better hear this preacher. If you've ever heard a preacher, you better hear me now. It doesn't exist. It's a myth. Make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt. The tree is known by its fruit. And then people say, oh, I get mail all the time. You know, I'm the only major, I say major, I got 29,000 followers. I don't know what that makes me. Preacher on TikTok who actually reads all of his comments and responds to every one of them and answers every question unless they give me a death threat, <laughs> call me a name, or a rude then I'll block you. But if they talk to me with manners and politeness and decency and courtesy, and those are four things that are gone in America's society, there's no manners, there's no decency, there's no integrity, there's no courtesy. Why? Because of social media, because of the internet. Listen, God is tired of us playing games. God is tired of the video game generation. God is tired of the metaverse already. God is tired of it, and it is time. It is time. It is time that preachers take a stand in their pulpit and call America back to the word, back to the blood, back to the cross, back to grace, back to the gospel, and away from video games, and PlayStation, and Minecraft, and Xbox, and Madden, and all these war games, and all these violent games. We wonder why our schools are being shot up, our churches are being shot up, our concerts and workplaces are being shot up, because our society, our young people are being demonized, and they're being possessed by demons, devils, and evil spirits, and they get in from the videos, from the videos, from the videos, from the videos they watch. Violent TV, violent cartoons, violent games as the camera replaces the cross. Violence pervades our society. We wonder why we have so much gun violence. We wonder why we have so much gang violence. Because of images. 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 Images that are transmitted through our devices, our demon devil devices. 
which transmit pornographic images, violent images, sexual images, denigrating images. And people use this, this thing to brag, to boast, to blaspheme. That's why I call it an idol phone. Yeah, there's 1% of it that you can use to preach. That's what I do. I preach with it. I preach to every nation, kindred, tongue, tribe, language, and people. I try to use tech for truth, but it's a losing battle. And the more I preach, and the more I preach, the more I get ignored. How many of you know Noah spent his life preaching? Get on the boat. Get on the ark. But Noah, spelled N-O, N-O, N-O-A-H, Noah had no converts. And God drowned the whole world. You ought to take this idol phone. Hey, I don't, I'm not singling out. I'm not singling out Samsung, Verizon, and Galaxy. Let's do, let's do this old, this old idol phone from Apple too. Let's take it all. Let's take Apple and let's take Samsung. And let's take it all. And let's take it all. And look what you do. Throw it away. Throw it away. Throw it in the garbage. Throw it in the trash. Because that's exactly, that's exactly, that's exactly, that's exactly what it does. It leads to hell. It leads to your head. Why? Because it leads you into temptation. The internet is how you enter into temptation. You hear the clock? It's time to repent. That's my theme music. It's time to repent. It's time to repent. Tick tock goes the clock. Tick tock goes the clock. Tick tock. Tick tock. You hear it? You hear it? Tick tock. Tick tock goes the clock. Tick tock. But what happens, tick tock, when your ticker stops ticking? Jesus said, Jesus said to the people of his age, he called them a generation of vipers. And he said, you don't even discern, you can't even discern the time, the time. Tick tock goes the clock. Tick tock goes the clock counting down Armageddon. You can't even discern the signs of the times. It is the last days of the end times. But you'd rather play a video game. You'd rather play Nintendo. It's the last days of the end times. But instead of watching and praying, you'd rather watch TV and play video games. God tires of your games. C-O V uh, D. Can you spell? Huh? That's all I'm going to say. C O V I D. Look, if animal videos V I D and baby videos V I D and laughing funny videos V I D and hip hopping. Rapping, rock and roll videos, and you hip hopping, you you hip hopping your way into hell. You are hip hopping your way into hell. You are hip hopping your way into hell. If if anime videos and 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 and, and lip syncing videos and dancing videos are more important to you, and you spend more time looking at screens doing that than looking at scripture and praying, then my friend, you're not saved. You're an idolater. You need to get born again. You need to repent. What are the preacher? We'll tell you that. Look what Jesus said to his generation. Now, I didn't mean to spend this much time on this text, but the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, is leading me, so we're going to obey. Jesus looked at them. People think, oh, Jesus was meek. Jesus was mild. Jesus was sweet. Jesus never challenged anybody. Jesus never confirmed anybody. Jesus compromised. Jesus was carnal. Jesus never got in their face. Jesus, no, 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 no. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. The real Jesus said, he looked around the face. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the multitudes, the Sanhedrin, the scribes, the masses, the numbers. And he said, oh, generation of vipers. 
He called them snakes. He called them snakes. But Joel Osteen and his imitators and Stephen Furtick and his imitators won't even say the word sin or conviction or repent or wrath or judgment. But I don't care what they say. Judgment day is coming. Judgment day is at hand. Jesus called them snakes. He in another place, he called them you generation of adulterers. He called out, he confronted, and he challenged their sin. Does your pastor do that? Oh no, because I might cause them to develop a sin consciousness. The Great Revolution says, good, you need to develop a sin consciousness so you can get saved from sin. Jesus doesn't save you in your sin. He saves you out of and away and from your sin. Your sin of idols, images, icons, and likenesses. Not only did he call them snakes, verse 34 of Matthew 12, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I hear how people talk. People, that they call themselves born-again Christians. They, they go to church. They're religious. <laughs> they join the church. They shake the preacher's hand. They sing in the choir. They praise and they worship. But look, praise and worship doesn't save you. Repentance and faith saves you. People today at Hillsong at elevation, they're praising a God they no longer pray to. I listen to how they talk. They say they're they say they're a Christian, but they cuss. They drop the F bomb, the S bomb, the G D bomb, the B bomb, and every other bomb you can drop. They drop the bomb on me. They're not saved. I listened to a man the other day. <laughs> a few of you may have heard of him. His name is Real Donald Trump. And he was, a, a lot of y'all voted for him. A lot of y'all like him. A lot of y'all think he should come back and be president again in 2024. And some of y'all, you won't say it in public. You think he ought to come back a little bit before that. Okay, <laughs> I didn't say it. But Donald Trump at a rally, and they had it on the screen, Save America. Save America. Look, Donald Trump can't save America. Only Jesus Christ can save America. You better quit wanting Trump to come back again. And you better, you, you better long for the Trump of Almighty God and for Jesus to come back again. Jesus is the Savior, not Donald. And if you start worshiping a man, a mere mortal sinful man, then you are of Antichrist and not of Jesus Christ. Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived in this day of deception, in this day of darkness, and in this new spiritual dark age we find ourselves in. As Donald was giving the speech, he kept using the H word. The H word. Now I'll preach about hell in the context of the Bible and warn you not to go there. But I'm not going to say H this and H that and H no. And go to H. No Christian washed by the blood, sanctified, would ever say that. I listened to Donald speak, and every other word was BS. BS. B no born again Christian. No blood washed, blood bought, redeemed Christian would ever say those words. Jesus said, Many will come in my name. And even do great signs and wonders. But I didn't send them. I didn't call them. They're not of me. They are false prophets. And they are false Christs. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You listen to somebody talk, you can locate them. You can identify them. You listen to somebody talk. You, you look at what they post on the internet. You look at what they type. What they tweet. What they transmit in their transmissions, and you know within 10 seconds if that person's saved, is that person born again and full of the Holy Ghost, or is he full of the devil? 
If you've ever listened to a preacher, listen to me right now. Listen to me, Jeff Bezos, who owns the Washington Post. Listen to me, Bill Gates of Microsoft and the Foundation. Listen to me, Sundar Pichai. Listen to me, Tim Cook of Apple. Listen to me, Marky Mark Zuckerberg. Forget about the things you're posting. The things you're posting. The things you're posting. The th the, all the boasting that you're doing is going to make you roast in hell. And God's going to make you toast forever because you're lying with your eastern establishment over enlightened supposedly highly educated environmental tree hugging nut job wacko madness you better forget about the washington post and the new york times and the la times and all the other liberal publications of lies and throw it away Throw it away with all the other junk and garbage. That garbage can's getting full over there. That garbage can's getting full over there. You better throw it away. You better forget about posting on the internet. And you better worry about the post that Jesus hung on. The stipe and the pentibulum. The cross upon which Jesus died. You better quit worrying about transmissions and transmitting. Because God's giving you, Omicron, a very highly transmissible disease. You better quit worrying about transmissions and transmitting and have your transgressions forgiven by the blood of the cross. You better quit worrying about posting TikToks and tweeting on Twitter. And you better understand the truth of Almighty God. You better get your face off of Facebook, which is the face of Satan, social media, being social disease, and get your face back in the book. Get your face back in the book. Get your face back in the book. He calls it, he calls it metaverse now. He calls it meta, but all Facebook is is a metastasized cancer. Forget about Zuckerberg and read Zephaniah. And Zechariah in your Bible. He called them evil. Today we're not supposed to judge. Oh, don't judge, Brother Mike. <clears throat> I hear that all the time. Don't judge, Brother Mike. Well, Jesus commanded me to judge in John 7 24, judge righteous judgment. God commanded Ezekiel. In Ezekiel chapter 20, verses 1 and 2, 22, verses 1 and 2, he said, Ezekiel, wilt thou judge them, O son of man? The preacher's job is to judge. The preacher's job is to judge. But you see, psychology came along and said, don't judge. Purpose-driven life, prosperity, politics came along. Don't judge. But see, they don't know the real Jesus. They know one verse, the heart. Matthew 7, 1 is the verse every sinner knows by heart. <laughs> it's the memory verse for every sinner. And they don't realize that many other places, Jesus and Paul and Peter commands us to judge. For instance, 1 Peter 4, 17. For it is time, it is time, it is time, it is time for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if judgment begins at the house of God, where shall the ungodly and the sinner wind up? In hell, we have to judge. We have to take a stand and draw the line in the sand. Because that's what Jesus did. And he's our example. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. This is Jesus talking. You're denying the real Jesus. You're lying about the real Jesus. You're, you're burying your head in the sand. You're, you're, you're burying your head in the same sand that you build your beach house on. The shrinks have shrunk the gospel to where there's nothing left. An evil man out of the evil treasures bring forth evil things. But Jesus said in verse 36, and you better, you better think about this. Jesus said, every idol, I talk about idols, images, icons, that's I-D-O-L-S. But it's also I-D-L-E-S. Every idol, idol, every idol word that men shall speak or tweet or type or text or transmit. They shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words shall thou be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. This is not, Jesus loves me, 
This I know, for the Bible tells me so. This is not John 3.16. This is not a Billy Graham crusade where Billy is pleading and crying and, and the song leader, uh, Cliff Barrows, is singing, Just as I am without one plea. Look, we need to re-examine the gospel. We need to take another look at Jesus. It's not Jesus loves me. This I know. It's Jesus is mad. Jesus is angry. And the wrath of the Lamb. Read Revelation chapter 6. The wrath of the Lamb is coming. And he shall return with a sword. Dipped in blood. His vesture dipped in blood. We need to re-examine Jesus. About what he said. Don't you dare come to God just as I am without one plea. No, no, you don't come to God just as I am. You throw yourself on the altar, repenting of sin, repenting of sin, crying and weeping and wailing and beating your breast between the porch and the altar. You come repenting. Then certain of the scribes and the Pharisees answered and said, Master, show us a sign. And that's what we do today. The Pentecostals, the Charismatics, the Word of Faithers, the megachurches. We want to see signs and wonders. But you're not saved by sight. The Bible said walk by faith and not by sight. The Bible said faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, not by seeing something on TV, not by seeing a sign of wonder. The same people that turned on Jesus and hung him on the cross were the ones, listen to me, they were the ones, they were the self-same ones who, who, who saw him raise Lazarus from the dead. They saw him, they were part of the three, four, five thousand that he fed. But charitable works, acts of charity, don't save. They, they, they were part, and they saw all the ones for which he cast out devils. All the ones that he healed. Many of them had been healed themselves, had been delivered themselves. But what did they do? They turned on him because they were using God as a genie in the bottle, as an ATM, an almighty teller machine. They were using God to get their felt needs met. They were using God. Like today's preachers, seeker sensitive. But I don't care about your felt needs. I care about your evil deeds. I'm not seeker sensitive. I tell the sinner about his sin. And Jesus answered. And he said the same thing to us today. Because Jesus doesn't change. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus said an evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign. Today's church, the only sign they're worried about is dollar signs. I said the only sign the church today is seeking is dollar signs, dollar signs, dollar signs, dollar signs, dollar signs, prosperity, increase, abundance, harvest, favor, dollar signs, dollar signs, dollar signs. And the preachers say, give me your money, give me your money. The preachers say, show me the money, show me the money. And if you plant it into my hands, God will multiply it back to you in seed faith. That is a lie. That is a lie. That is a lie. Take your money. Take your money and get it out of your hands and give it to the poor. Give it to the poor and make it rain in the name of Jesus Christ. Money is the biggest idol of it all. Paul said, 1 Timothy 4.12, the love of money is the root of all evil. Go back in the Old Testament. Go back in Chronicles. Solomon's money. They weighed it out. The money, the gold he got from Ophir. And you know what it weighed? You're not going to believe it. I think it's 1 Chronicles 10, 14. I call it the Solomon Code. It may be 2 Chronicles, but I think it's 1 Chronicles 10, 14. Look it up. The Solomon Code. You know how much the gold of Ophir weighed? 666 talents. Yeah, money is leading to the cashless society. The love of money. Electric currency, electric transactions is leading to the name of the beast. The mark of the beast. The number of the beast. 
The image of the beast. It's coming. It's coming. And without which you will not be able to buy or sell on your way to it. But Jesus called them evil and adulterous. How many of you know the Ten Commandments, God's moral law is still in effect. God's moral law did not pass away when Jesus died on the cross. The ceremonial law did. The sacrificial law was fulfilled. The dietary law, the feast days, was fulfilled. But God's moral law does not pass away. And you can call me a legalist. You can call me a legalist. In legalism, all you want. But you can pry God's moral law from my cold, dead, Bible-thumping hand. He called them evil. Today's preachers won't do that. Today's preacher won't get in your face because they're afraid of you. Today's preacher wants to please men, but I want to please God. And that's why you should follow me. No sign will be given but the sign of the prophet Jonah. Now notice the word Jonah. Jonah, I'm going to preach tomorrow on Jonah. Jonah mattered to Jesus. Jesus was really into the Old Testament. For as Jonah, listen, verse 40, was three days and three nights in the whale's belly. And you better take the Bible literally. When the Bible said he was in a whale's belly or the belly of a great fish, that's exactly where he was. When the Bible said God spoke and the world was created, you better believe it as written, as written. Quit explaining away the Bible. Quit getting in your higher criticism and criticizing the Bible. Down with your humanism. Down with your new age. Down with your so-called education. Down with your atheism and agnosticism and come back to the word of Almighty God before it's too late. As Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. It's the message of the cross that I've been preaching. God told me the message for 2022 is the message of the cross. Don't preach anything but the Gospels and what I said. Don't preach anything but the message of the cross. And Jonah, Jonah, Jonah was important. Why? Because he was a type of Jesus. And it was a type of what Jesus would do on the cross. Three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment for this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, a greater than Jonah is with thee. Nineveh, the great city, like New York, repented. But today, I cry day and night on my various social media platforms and outreaches. But does America, does the world repent? No. An omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent God sent Omicron. But have people repented? No, the party goes on. We want to eat, drink, and be merry. Merry and given in marriage. God sent a warning. We're not listening. Tsunamis, tornadoes, earthquakes in diverse places, wars, rumors of wars. But we're not listening. It's not getting back to normal or better. It's getting worse. Seven last plagues, it says in Revelation 15, 1 and 2. Not 1, 2 or 3, 7. 7. Revelation chapter 9 says billions and billions are going to die. Why? Because you ain't seen nothing yet, says the Lord. Because the God variant is coming. I'm going to leave it right there. God has been showing mercy and grace and love. God has been very patient. That's why relatively few have died. Because God is a merciful God. Hallelujah. A God of grace and love. But there's a day when the grace of God runs out. Are you listening to me? There's a day when the patience and the mercy of God runs out, and that day has come. It's called the Great Tribulation Period, and we are entering it as we speak. Antichrist is being revealed. I'll close with verse 43. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, a lot of people get saved. They try to give their life to Jesus. They get on the straight and narrow for a while. But like the parable of the sower that I just finished preaching. I hope y'all saw that series. They don't stay saved. They don't stay sanctified. They don't stay full of the Holy Spirit. 
The demon walks through dry places seeking rest and finds none. And then he says, I will return into my house from which I came out. And when he's come, he finds it empty, swept, and garnished. And then he goes and takes with himself, listen to me. I speak by the word of the Lord. I speak by the word of the Lord. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven. I just talked about the seven last plagues from Revelation 15, 1 and 2. Seven other spirits. I'm talking about plagues, pestilences, and pandemics. Jesus said in Matthew 24, he warned, he said, pestilence shall come. Joel said, signs in the heavens. You look at the UFOs, supposedly. You look at, you look at the tornadoes. You look at all the signs, all the strange lights, all the phenomena. Signs in heaven, signs in the earth. It's time, it's happening. I will take seven other spirits more wicked than himself it's going to get worse you ain't seen nothing yet seven more spirits more wicked than himself and they enter in and dwell thereof and listen the last state of that man is worse than the first state even so shall it be under this wicked generation he called his generation wicked wicked witches he called them sorcerers he called them shamans he called them adulterers he called them adulteresses he called them snakes Was it hate speech? He was intolerant. He was uninclusive. He was divisive. He didn't show diversity. He wasn't welcoming. He wasn't affirming. Was it hate speech? Look, ladies and gentlemen, we are in, as Tim LaHaye said, the late Tim LaHaye said, the battle for the mind. The battle for the mind. The battle for the mind right now. The battle for the mind. And that is why I preach on TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Every day. All day long. Because this is the last generation. And this is the last harvest. And Jesus is coming again. The battle for the mind. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. Father, we thank you today for your holy, inspired, infallible, and inerrant written word. I pray, O oh God, now that you convict by your Holy Spirit sinners of sin, righteousness, and judgment. And I pray you bring them to the bleeding side of Calvary. And I pray it in Jesus' name, amen. I want you, wherever you are, unless you're driving a car, to hit your knees right now. <laughs> to fall on your face right now. <laughs> and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. God, forgive me. God, forgive me. Take hold of the horns of the altar. Pray through right now to a breakthrough. And say, God, wash me in the blood of Jesus. Wash me in the blood of Jesus Christ. I repent. Nothing in my hands I bring, simply to the cross I cling. And now I'm going to invite you to pray this prayer. Somebody on, he's well-meaning, he, he, he loves God, but he was preaching on TikTok saying he doesn't believe in the sinner's prayer. I do. Why? Because sinners need to pray, and it's better than nothing. Thief on the cross, man, that's a sinner's prayer. He said, Lord, remember me. Hallelujah. That's what you need to say right now. Lord, start it. Lord, remember me. Lord, remember me. God, I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins as, a, as my substitute, as a sin sacrifice, as a sin offering, paying the price to you. I believe he died in like Jonah, three days and three nights. But God, I believe he's risen from the dead. Hallelujah. And he's alive. And right now, Lord Jesus, I invite you into my heart. Come into my heart. I accept you as my personal Savior. I make you the Lord of my life. <laughs> I dedicate, consecrate, commit myself to you and I will live for you every moment of every minute of every hour, of every day of every month, of every year of every decade for the rest of my life and I pray it in Jesus name 
Amen. Glory be to God forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And without any further ado, without beating around the bush, the healing power is flowing. The healing anointing. There it is. There it is. We don't have to conjure this up. We don't have to have emotion or excitement because it is. The river of God is flowing. And right now, whatever sickness and disease or addiction or torment or habit you have, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone by the cross by his stripes you're healed so be healed and receive it there it is that there it is whoa there it is it's done hallelujah praise god lift your hands and say thank you lord for healing me thank you lord for delivering me and thank you lord for setting me free and god specifically has gifts of healings and and working of miracles and special faith right now for those of you who are suffering from cancer and from covid heart disease brain disease diabetes, hypertension, and HIV AIDS. In the name of Jesus right now, the gifts of, of the Spirit are moving. They are flowing. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. I rebuke and I cast out COVID and cancer and every other spirit of infirmity from your body right now. I break your power by the blood of the cross. I break your power by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and a spirit of freedom is flowing. I said a spirit of freedom is flowing. You better quit dancing in honky tonks and bars and on TikTok for the devil and you better start dancing in the Holy Ghost. Dancing in the Holy Ghost. You better quit playing and start praying. Glory to God. And lift your hands and thank God for the moving <laughs> and the operation of the Holy Spirit. We didn't go the direction I planned today. God took us on a detour, but thank God he took us on the narrow way. Praise God. Hallelujah. Pastors, this type of revival can come to your in-person brick and mortar pulpit. Invite me. I dare you. I double dog dare you. 703-405-1942. That's how you schedule Evangelist Mike Dial to speak in your church, your conference, your camp meeting, your convention, 703-405-1942. And before I go, those of y'all that know me, my 29,000 followers on TikTok, and there's about 37,000 if you count all the platforms and forums that I preach on, y'all know I never ask for, plead for, cry for, demand for money. I don't ask for money. I don't do that. I'm not a prosperity preacher. But we do accept offerings, donations, contributions. Amen. If God leads you to do it, and I think he's leading tens of thousands of you to do it, you need to obey God. And the way we receive contributions, donations, offerings is one way. That's through my Venmo, V-E-N-M-O, V-E-N-M-O, Venmo, at, it's one word, Evangelist Mike Dial. Capitalize the E for Evangelist, the M for Mike, the D for Dial, at Evangelist Mike Dial, Venmo. If you love this ministry and you appreciate this ministry, and this ministry is helping you every day, then please pray about, pray about, ask God, should I donate, contribute, give an offering to evangelist Mike Dial. Amen. We don't promise a harvest, a blessing, increase, favor. That's between you and God. Amen. I love you. I love you. Thanks for being with me today, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Remember, Jesus is still your answer. Amen and amen.